What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Appreciate everybody checking out the video. Today, we're going to be discussing Tyler Lock 2021 player profile and why I think that if you drafted him last year, you have a little PTSD because of the, the major highs where that were few and far between and a lot of lows, why you should be jumping back on the Tyler Lockett bandwagon for 2021. So we're going to do that right now. Lock it in, strap down, roll the intro. Let's go. Welcome back in, everybody. I appreciate everybody checking out the video. Be sure to hit that like and subscribe button for future content. We are in the business of winning championships around here. I say it every single video. I'm going to continue to say it. That's our goal. You can always hit us up in the comment section um, or on Twitter at FF underscore authority. Uh, for any questions you may have, I guarantee you, you will get a response from us. We will always answer. I don't care how big we get, how many questions we get, we will answer. Uh, any fantasy football question you may have to get you ready for this season. So without further ado, let's jump into it. So Tyler Lockett in 2020, like I already mentioned, was a, a much of up and down, right? But overall, if you look on paper, it didn't look as bad as, as it really was, right? He was 12th among all wide receivers in fantasy points per game, 13th in overall fantasy points scored. Uh, he played a lot from the slot last year, 8th in slot snaps, uh, 132 targets, 100 receptions, 1,054 receiving yards, and 10 total touchdowns. So on paper, you look at that and if you didn't have Tyler Lockett last year like man he, he played pretty well last year why is he going at wide receiver 25 26 and ADP right now the biggest problem is, is because it was very much high and low it was very much a high and low scenario for Tyler Lockett last year you know if you look at him last year uh the problem you know he had week three where he had nine for one 100 yards and three touchdowns and then week seven 15 receptions for 200 yards and three touchdowns and in week 17 12 for 90 and two which didn't help anybody because that came after the fantasy championship. So I really had those two weeks where he really had those big spike weeks where a majority of his production came from because past that, the other 13 games, he only scored two touchdowns and only had reached 70 yards receiving once uh, over that, over those 13 games. So you really couldn't use him a lot of weeks or most weeks. And, and really towards the rest of the season, you probably didn't even play him anymore because he just wasn't scoring any fantasy points. And in fantasy football, obviously in, in season long formats is different than best ball where best ball, you're looking for those spike weeks, but in season long formats, you want that consistency. You want that guy that's going to give you that 15, 18 fantasy points on most weeks. That's what's going to help you win your week. Right. And so when a guy hit, he only gives you two massive spike weeks. Of course, you definitely probably won those two weeks that you played. Uh, if you, you played title locket, but through the rest of the season, those those opportunities are few and far between. So, but I'm here to say that I think that we, we should expect a bounce back year coming uh, for Tyler Lockett this year, or at least a more consistent season. Because, like I said, 100 receptions, a thousand yards, and 10 touchdowns is a great year for any wide receiver. However, if it all comes in a couple of games, that's going to be over the past three seasons. He is third among all wide receivers in receiving yards, fifth in touchdowns, 18, 15 plus yard receptions. And if you look over the past two seasons, I mean, him and Metcalf lead the NFL in end zone targets since 2019 as well over the past two seasons. So the opportunity is certainly there for, for these two wide receivers. It's a very condensed offense. And I think you can expect much more of that in 2021 where – you know, they did go out. They did add a few pieces. They added Gerald Everett. They added Dwayne Eskridge in the second round. But I don't expect Dwayne Eskridge to have a huge impact in year one for this offense. I do think it's a nice piece moving forward. He is dynamic in space. And somebody that really caught people by surprise in the in the senior bowl and all the practices leading up to it. He was kind of the hype guy. And if you if you want a, a Dwayne Eskridge video and kind of want to know who he is, we do have a video on him. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description down below for that as well if you want to check that out. But overall, I think this offense is going to be pretty dynamic this year obviously you have russell wilson who is one of the best quarterbacks in all of football we don't have to go into that every single year the dude balls out so there's nothing to worry about there and i think the one area that i think that we we should expect that's going to help this offense is going to be their defense because their defense was terrible last year uh all the way up until the final six weeks of the season and while some people may you know if you just look at that and say oh well man uh, they really turned it around maybe they figured it out no they just they just played a lot of really really bad quarterbacks they played Dwayne Haskins Carson Wentz Jared Goff CJ Beathard Sam Darnold and Colt McCoy over the final six weeks of the season any defense can figure it out against those bums so I think this offense is, is probably going to be primed to have to throw the ball a lot. Last year, there were 15th in pass attempts per game, but a lot of that was the first eight weeks of the season. So if you look at that, I think that with this defense being terrible, I think you're going to have to throw the ball a lot. And I know Pete Carroll likes to run the football, and he's still stuck in the 90s way of football. But hopefully, with the additions they made on the offense, with Russell Wilson throwing a little bit of fit this offseason, as well as bringing in a new offensive coordinator, getting rid of Brian Schottenheimer, 
I love his dad, Marty Schottenheimer. I'll always have a special place in, my, place in my heart. But Brian Schottenheimer is a terrible offensive coordinator, and I am happy he has gone out of Seattle. They bring in Shane Waldron, who has, comes off the Sean McVay coaching tree. So I, I do like that addition as well. I think for 2021, what can we expect for this offense? I think we expect a much more um, – balanced offense i think you probably don't see because what ended up happening last year and tyler lockett even talked about it himself that, that he, he feels like defense has really figured out this offense uh out in the second half of the season and really shut them down and they never made any adjustments they never tried to change anything up and i think that ended up hurting them you know we saw it was it wasn't just tyler lockett you know dk metcalf russell wilson they, they all just weren't the same in the second half of the season as they were in the first half the first half russell wilson was on a historic pace uh, the first half of the season, it was MVP season for Russ. And then in the second half, they fell off. So I expect a, much, a bounce back season over the full, uh, you know, 17 games this year. I like Tyler Lockett. Right now, he is being drafted at, in the sixth round wide receiver 26. And I think that's incredible value for a guy who still finishes wide receiver 13. And if he can be more consistent, especially with, with his amount of targets, and he gets that those prime value targets on, in the short and intermediate routes, he's going to play a ton from the slot and get a lot of those opportunities. I think this can be a big bounce back here for Tyler Lockett. I am buying into Tyler Lockett. If you can get Tyler Lockett in the sixth round, I am all about that life. You know, especially if you're, if you're loading up on running back early, you're taking running back in the first two or three, four rounds of your draft, you know, and you're coming back and you're starting to hit wide receiver i love the start of like cooper cup and then give me tyler lockett especially in ppr formats i think that's a strong start at your wide receiver core you're going to add some more later but i like tyler lockett i think that we should be uh kind of throw away what happened last year it was kind of a it was kind of a fluky in the way that the production came i think you can expect a much more solid overall season from him i appreciate everybody checking out the video i will catch you on the next one which will be tomorrow whenever we, we discuss Tyreek Hill and why I think that he is he is the wide receiver one this year you should be drafting if you are taking a wide receiver early in the first round. We'll be discussing that tomorrow. And leave a comment in the comment section below. Uh, let me know what you think of Tyler Lockett. Are you drafting him this year or are you are, are you just done with him? You don't want to mess with him because of you know the production last year. You got some PTSD from how he, how he performed last year that you almost couldn't use him for most weeks. Let me know in the comment section below and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. 